all of you for recognizing that the struggle is hard and long, but victory is inevitable. So please continue to fight for peace. Continue to send the message to the White House that we want peace. And so I want to leave you today with on an up note that the day is going to come when we will have to study war no more. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie, for those wonderful words. Um, I'd like to bring up here, one thing I didn't mention earlier was uh, we've been out here since about 6.30 this morning with a crew, uh, and I want to thank everyone who was here helping. We had, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. Um, members from Peace Action, from Veterans for Peace, uh, Fellowship of Reconciliation, Douglas Mackey, I want to thank you specifically with your sister Lynn for um, uh, helping us bring this memorial to Staten Island. And, um, and uh, somebody from <laughs> Granny Peace Brigade and Code Pink. Uh, so everyone really, we just really got together and did this um, a as, as one group and not different organizations. Uh, the struggle is so that we can all join in and um, present this. So I, I want to bring up a member of Veterans for Peace, Chapter 34, uh, Hugh Bruce, who's been here uh, every time we've done this exhibit. And he's a, uh, definitely a man of peace and justice. Uh, come speak, Hugh. My brothers and sisters, it's a shame that we have to gather in this fashion one more year. You know, there are those who say that it's necessary for us to also remember the civilian casualties that result from the war, and I fully agree with them, but this, this is about the fallen of our own nation. My first memory as a child was that of a funeral home in Manhattan where my Uncle Howard Harrison had died at the age of 19, fighting Rommel in a place called Tobruk. His body didn't come back to the United States for three years, so I was three years old when the closed casket came back. I come from a long line of people who, you know, if you weren't in the military, there was something definitely wrong with you. Well, there was in my case, but I wasn't in the military anyway. <laughs> Don't ask and I won't tell. As we confront this, as it's just been said, as we confront this year after year, I think we have good reason to feel disappointed. For example, we voted for change, and we're getting more of the same. If anybody wants to know why you shouldn't be in Afghanistan, you could start asking a guy by the name of Alexander the Great. He was the first one to be defeated in Afghanistan. Or on a more recent note, you might ask Mikhail Gorbachev, who lost 85,000 members of the Russian army in Afghanistan. But you see, we're not told that. And the kids are not taught that in school. He lost in Afghanistan, and he lost an empire as a direct result of it. We shall lose ours, too. It's inevitable that the world is not going to sit by and allow us to have bases all over the world so that we can impose our economic hegemony on people far flung. We pay no attention to what's happening at home. All you have to do is pick up your paper and see what is the oil poisons in the South Atlantic. And there's no end in sight. This is a country so blessed by God with such enormous resources and talent, all being misdirected all being misdirected. I read in the New York Times that 25 years after the rest of the world had them, we will be getting high-speed rail transportation in this country. You know where they're coming from? China. Just as 
If you go into your radio shack, the local radio shack, you will not find a single item in the entire store that's made in the United States of America. Ironically, the Tandy Corporation was founded by a right winger who was a big supporter of General Edwin A. Walker back in my day, if anybody remembers him. It's very easy to become discouraged, but you know, when you're doing the right thing, you can have a moral certitude that sooner or later, I don't think I'll ever live to see it, but sooner or later there will be respect for international law and we are going to come out on the short end of the stick. So until we start influencing our government, and screaming and shouting isn't going to help, but somebody has to tell the tea baggers, it's the war economy, stupid. Cannot continue in, in, in on our present path. It's not going to work. We have a decent and a legitimate message to bring to the American people. And there's only one way to do it, and that's what we're doing right now. Every one of us. I know how discouraging it is. My case, doubly so, because I'm a caretaker for an 89 year old mother. So that kind of cramps my style on occasion, as you can imagine. Sane and well-considered actions on our part are having an impact. The discussion is still there. Uh, the change certainly isn't coming as fast as you would like it or I would like it. But I think it's very, very important that we think carefully before we act. There's enough people out there who are alienated, but they don't know why. We don't need to contribute to the alienation by doing things that they find offensive. What we need is conversation. What we need is communication. I think Elaine knows what I'm talking about on that particular issue. But, you know, I don't hate my country's flag. And I still believe in what, it, what I was told it stood for. And it can again. It can again. Much wiser men than me have used terms like keep the faith, keep your eye on the prize. And we've got a tremendous prize, we really do. The prize of world peace, the prize of brotherhood, mutual respect among people of varying cultures and religions. It's all possible, it's all in the realm of the possible, and there's so many people who've given a lifetime to doing that. I can't